So we'll call to order the uh, November 13th uh, Conway Select Board meeting. It's 533 uh, and uh, our meeting is being taped by FCAT as usual. Uh, for now. Uh, for now. Uh, <laughs> Uh, honored to be being taped by Chris Collins himself, who's a, who's the head of FCAT, so we're quite honored. Um, so, uh, the first thing we'll try to, we'll do is approve the minutes. Did everybody uh, read the minutes? Yeah, I have a couple corrections. Okay. Um, the first is um, when you're recording a vote where there's abstentions, where there's yeses and then abstentions. I think it should be two zero one instead of two one. Is the way you're yes. Speaking? It should. So that's right here, the first paragraph. Oh, yes. Can you uh, make <coughs> sure that goes oh, two and one? Yeah. The first paragraph of. Yeah, the definitely. Minutes. Yeah, the, fir the first motion to approve minutes. Okay. It should be. Uh, and uh, John abstained. Uh, so it would be two to zero to one. Yep. Okay, thank you. And then the second yeah. correction I have is. Um, the all committee meeting notes. Yeah. Um, the the board of health part. I just wanted it. I just wanted my comment in there to please don't put, do the paper bag without town meeting approval. That's in the second paragraph on the uh, second page. Oh, how does the paragraph begin? Uh, for the Board of Health, the board, board Chair health. Carl Milky. Yeah. yeah, so it's in the paragraph beginning for the Board of Health. Mm -hmm. uh, insert a statement um, after the second, after. Uh, before the last sentence, insert uh, Cantor requested that a per bag a pay per bag program not be instituted without prior town meeting approval. Okay. And with those two corrections I would move to approve the minutes as amended. So all everyone in favor? Yes. You second. I'll say I'll, okay, I second, right. And I'll say aye. So no opposed. So we have three warrants. Um, so we have a vendor warrant for sixty-three thousand and ninety-four. Is that right? Oh no, no that's only minutes. Minute. minutes. Uh, I, do, yeah, I knew it was yeah, formatted yeah. wrong. So. No, that, <laughs> okay, great. That was less than that, half the vendor was, warrant. <laughs> yeah. So we have a vendor warrant for one hundred and twenty thousand five eighty-two. Six and sixty-one cents. And sixty-one cents. We have a payroll warrant for one hundred and eleven nine seventy-two and six cents, and a payroll deduction warrant for twenty-seven thousand five hundred two and ninety cents. Move to approve so, the warrants. Okay, I'll second. So yes, I. So meetings attended by select board members. So yes, I was at uh, Hyannis Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for the three-day uh, Department of Elementary Secondary Education, Department of Revenue, and Attorney General Office of Ethics uh, conference in conjunction with the Massachusetts uh, School Committee Association and the Massachusetts School Superintendents Association. That's a mouthful. School governance and school finance and uh, ethics in government, uh, et cetera. So that was quite the three-day conference. Yeah. Learned anything new? I did. Oh. I did. Um, had an interesting conversation with the, uh, the town attorney for Chester. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the, the ethics, the state e ethics people were cracking down on small towns with their special employee designation being applied to uh, uh, employees over 800 hours. 
So that's the special employee mm-hmm. designation is what small towns do to, uh, to, to make the state ethics rules non, uh, so, so that you're not, co- so that yeah. the employee is not covered by the state ethics rules, things like nepotism. Not, not all of them. Right, <laughs> right. Things like nepotism and self-dealing and whatnot. And, uh, 800 hours a year? 800 hours a year is the limit on the employee uh, that, beyond, if they go over 800 hours, they, they cannot be a special town employee and they would have to be subject to all that. And so there's a renewed emphasis wow. on going after towns that are non-compliant with that. And, that. and I don't know where we fit in on all that, but um, they made it seem like they're pretty serious about that. They will catch us. I don't know if we, I, I, I don't know if we're out that, there to be caught. It feels okay. That's four hours a day, right? That's, well, that's, no. well, no, no, right. No. We work more it's, more than yeah. It's 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 less than that. Um, the the our main special municipal employee is the administrative assessor, um, and it is by position. Um, not by an individual. Uh, select board members are automatically uh, yes. special municipal employees. Yes. But, um, with no time, with no hourly. Yeah. Yeah. So they're a special case. A special special. But, and then a whole lot on, uh, on uh, executive session minutes and uh, that that's a focus of litigation in the eastern part of the state now. Um, but basically, as soon as you are in special uh, in your executive session, and as soon as you get the thing that you went into executive session o- discussed or over with, then you're even if there's other tangible issue, uh, outstanding issues surrounding that, you're supposed to go into public. That aren't so, included, yeah. Um, and in general, the no, that they they're statewide. They have faults with the noticing requirement that people aren't we're not noticing enough in the agenda and whatnot that the public is supposed to tell exactly why you're in executive session and exactly um, what the matter is. Um, and that it's not sufficient to just say what statute is or the reason for it. And the reason just, number six. Yeah, and, or give the barest mm-hmm. amount of, yeah. um, you know, whatever. So, uh-huh. and, and I asked a lot of questions about that and where it is and with, uh, yeah, so. But I, a lot of other stuff too. Great. How to spend and not to spend E and D and all that stuff. So, yeah. yeah. So I had a busy couple of weeks. Um, I think I exceeded my 800 hours. <laughs> just attending meetings. No. Um, so one of the meetings I went to was we had a, a meeting of what's called the Small Town Summit. I go to various Small Town Summit meetings. This one, they held instead of holding it in Charlemont, they've been trying to hold spread them around to various towns. And this one they held actually in Belcher Town, which is not exactly a small town. But the reason is the, the topic was to talk about transportation and in hopes that maybe a slightly bigger town might be doing some interesting things that that we haven't thought of. So, and, and the people in Belcher Town said they're not. So that wasn't very helpful, but it was a good place to have a meeting. And, uh, and I went to my first Conservation Commission meeting uh, a little less than two weeks ago, so that was very good. Um, and there is another one today, so we'll see how that goes. But so it's a, it's, it's, it's a nice group and, and talking about issues, you know, I mean projects that are going on all over town, which is, which is fun. Um, the same day as the election, November 6th, was the very, or the very first, I believe, highway garage, yes. hi- highway uh, garage committee meeting. Yes, I was here for that. And, uh, and that was a good meeting. We toured the, the highway garage and then came back here and had a discussion, you know, about how to sell it better, how to walk into town meeting and, and not get the amount of pushback and uh, Walter Goodrich has a lot of great ideas and, and it was well attended. Uh, we had an FCAT uh, meeting on Thursday um, and, to- and talked slightly about what we're gonna talk about today about uh, the FCC. Basically, Chris is running FCAT well and, and uh, 
no issues there. And uh, we had a Conway Cable Commission or committee meeting here the, the, to talk about our upcoming franchise agreement with Comcast. And uh, this was the first meeting that was supposed to be attended by our lawyer, Bill Solomon, but Bill wasn't able to make it. He had a, a health issue. And uh, so we, he was here by phone uh, and, and Comcast was here and we had a good discussion and uh, from- And you'll be meeting next again when? And we'll be meeting again in, I could look it up on my phone. I can't remember. Um, uh, well. In another two months, I believe. Um, okay. And I think at that time, if all the issues get resolved that we talked about, we would be ready to write our new franchise agreement. It's, and there are basically not very many complicated issues um, in our next agreement. Uh, some of the numbers change. But you're um, going to discuss that at your next meeting. Yes, we would. Yes, we will. Uh, <clears throat> So, so those are those those are, those were my meetings. So, public comments. Yeah. No public comments, Chris. You heard good. Okay. Uh, so we have two items of old business in the agenda. Uh, one was uh, to to uh, discuss the electricity aggregation uh, process that we talked about last week. And we were supposed to get a letter from Colonial Power, and we have not yet uh -huh. gotten it. So we're going to have to table that item. And what would that letter be about? Uh, what we're expecting? It, this is a letter that will then, um, it's their final uh, letter, or our final letter that will actually get the, the, uh, the proposal filed at DPU. So, yeah. So, th so this is this is the step in which now it will take another six months after that for the DPU to then approve our aggregation. Yeah. Uh, and it says consider a letter opposing expansion of the Chinese immersion charter school. And that I think um, the the due date for comments is December third, I believe. Um, and I, um, I'm going to ask that we table that and bring that back in at the next meeting. And, but the Chinese Immersion School, Charter School, is seeking to double their size, um, which would have negative impacts for all the towns. Yes, it would. And they applied for this a couple of years ago. And it got turned and, down. And it got denied. And, right. and that was significant because it's the first time they had ever denied right. an expansion by a charter school. Right. And so they're trying it again. And it was significant, too, because it was the first time that DESE recommended denying it. Yeah. And uh, so not much has changed except it's two years later. Right. So new business. Uh, do we have a letter from Tom Pleasant? It is in the back. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> the chair of the board has requested that we <clears throat> um, discuss that in an executive session at a, a further meeting. Okay. As it deals with the lease of real estate. So yeah, John, sorry he wasn't able to make it today, so and so we can so do we yeah. have a motion to table that? Sure. Or move? Okay. Sure. So, great. Yeah, I assume we should vote on it, so we'll aye. Aye. Uh, and we're going to approve a few licenses. Yes, this is that season. Um, before we uh, were required to get our alcohol licenses in, um, which reminds me, I don't see a... Uh, we haven't gotten everything back yet from Barbara on this. That was a mistake. So we'll have that to, uh, we'll have to do that at the next meeting, which will be in right. time. We right. have to get the things in for the alcohol licenses by the end of November. We don't have to get the others in until the end of December, but we thought we'd put them all together. That said, now we have all the others and not, and not, these. And not the Conway in. So. Okay. 
So we'll table this for two oh, weeks. We, we can we can or, uh, we can approve these. We, we can approve these. So we have they're licenses. All, they're yeah. all good to go. Oh, we have very few. They've all paid their their permit fees. Costigan uh, and Vite and Mags and uh, and and Orchard also equipment. Cost, Costigan and Vite are, are auto licenses. Yeah. Yep. Mags is uh, antique dealer. Yeah. Um, and Oesco is. Orchard equipment. The Pride of Conway. Right, but uh, I forget exactly the the particular permit they're required to have, but uh, it's in the it's in the folder there. Right. I move to approve the four okay. licenses. And I second. So, aye. Aye. And those are ready to be signed. So these are in here. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I see. Okay, so. And I assume John will want to sign these. Yeah, we'll let him when know. he gets back. Great. And we have some employee recognition awards. Oh, that's also secondhand motor vehicles. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because they do a lot of repair mm -hmm. and resale. They work on my tractor and my farm equipment, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Got my pressure washer fixed up just perfect. I love yeah. it. So we have employee recognition awards for Nick Sweet. And for me, it must be in a misprint. It must be. Yeah, for you. Passing these things out like candy these days. Oh, well, that's what I say too. <laughs> so, how long have they each worked? So, these are all 10 year awards. No, well, some of them are more. Some, than some are two. more? Yeah, Christina's so, 20. So, Nick Sweet, it's a 10 year award. Yeah. And Joe Colucci, it's a 10 year award. And Christina, it's a 20-year award, and for me, it's only a 10-year award. So, wait, wait. The broadband yeah. committee's been around that long. It's hard to believe. Anyway, so I would uh, support a motion that we sign these and thank everyone all okay. very much. Okay, I'll move to sign the employee recognition letters or approve of them or whatever the nomenclature is that is appropriate. And I'll say aye. The second and the vote is second. unanimous in your favor. Yeah. Two to zero. Yes, so we, we'll get this one. And, we'll, and John will take care of this when he gets back. Printed on beautiful paper. Yeah. The, uh, At least we can do. <laughs> At some point, when we finish with the employee handbook, I'll ask the uh, personnel committee about doing something other than a letter. But we, th we thought this was a, at least something we can do. Sure, that's nice. So the next item of new business deals with this FCC rulemaking. Um, what FCC rulemaking? Bob? Yeah. <laughs> so, do you want to talk about this, Chris? Or yeah, I can talk if you want. I guess. Sure. Just to adjust the camera. Quick. Yeah. It's a little different. Straighten it out here. Yeah. Okay. Just make sure you're in the frame too. I'll be right there. You're, yeah. Good. Okay. Cut yourself right out here. <laughs> Hey, welcome to the hot seat. Oh, well, hello. Good evening. Um, I'm here to answer any questions. I mean, I, I know as much as you do at this point. Uh, the thing that I just found out, and there's layers to this decision, but one of the things that I think is the real killer 
is this idea that right now we get money from Comcast from cable franchise fees from citizens. And they give us the channels, space on the, on the system for free. If this rule goes into effect, which could happen as early as December, then they can take the cost of those channels and deduct it from the amount that comes in. As a, the, I guess they're looking at as in-kind contribution. I have no idea how much it costs to put a channel on a cable system. I have no way of knowing that, but... Whatever they say it does. Well, that's right. the thing. That's, that's, and and yeah. this is where, I mean, I don't think that people in my business, a couple of them do, but I don't think that the vast majority of public access directors across this country and even this commonwealth have any idea what's coming if this goes through. And, and I, as I understand it, the only way to stop an FCC rule change is by a vote of the United States Senate. And Ed Markey apparently is already on this. There's some talk that Mass Access, which is one of our advocacy organizations, is going to file a lawsuit or some kind of an injunction to try to block this. But I don't, I don't know how you can sue the FCC. I don't know that that's necessarily anything you can even happen. But I don't, I don't know. Well, the arbitrary and capricious clause is how you sue the FCC, like any agency that there has to be a sound policy basis for it. So, my question on stuff like this: because the FCC publishes rules after. The, in this administration in particular, they've already made their decision, and usually, and this is just them crossing the T, you know, dotting the I's and crossing the T's because they have to. But uh, in agency after agency, it's been shown that they don't even look at comments, yeah. um, and uh, which is one of the things they're getting sued for, and that might be an avenue to win. But um, so, it, it, who's the who's pushing for this? Who pushed for this? And then in the Usually, they only act in things that are going to strengthen Republican states and weaken uh, states that voted against the president in the last election. So that's how does this fit in with that overall plan? Well, I, I only know what I read. And, and what I've heard, the rationale for this is to foster competition among cable systems. Theoretically, uh, Comcast, the, the way this law was set up in 84... If Comcast has a lock on a given area, then no other charter company, no other company can come in. Charter can't come in, Time Warner can't come in, Comcast has it locked up. But in exchange for that, they give us a certain amount of money to the communities, and they'll give you free channel space for your public access station. That was what the, the Telecommunications Act of 84 that Ed Markey helped negotiate when he was in the House set up. Uh, so I guess theoretically, uh, this would open up the market potentially for other cable companies if they want to come in and build their own infrastructure. I don't think anybody's going to line up to come into any of these small communities. But I, I view it as a pretty non a pretty transparent way of trying to to remove a layer of the media that's open to just regular people. I mean, a lot of voices of dissent have come out of public access programming. Amy Goodman is a good example. David Packman is a good example. There are a lot of shows out there that, that try to speak truth to power, and, and a lot of these people have developed a pretty good network on public access stations. And not a lot of those people, I think, would necessarily swing from the same side of the fence as the president administration. So I think there is an ideological component to this, but I'm less concerned about that than I am about the reality, which is that if our funding gets, funding gets cut by even 30 or 40 percent, we're gonna have a tough time operating. I mean, right now we cover four towns with a budget of about one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. I can't even imagine what a forty or fifty percent hit to that, and that's a, a best case scenario. There's there's some public access stations that could lose all their funding. I don't know how this is gonna shape. This is the the problem. We don't know until it happens. And like I told the folks at NPR this week, you're not gonna you know you don't really notice something like this, this service like this, until it's gone. Until you can't watch meetings like this, gavel to gavel. You can't watch your town meeting. You can't watch your sports from Frontier. You can't watch the plays. And the, we have a telephone coming out for the music department on Thursday night. You know, those things won't happen anymore. And people will just be like, well, what happened? And we have to say, what the federal government put us out of business, basically. Scary stuff. And I'm not so much worried about my <coughs> professional future as much as I am. We've tried, really tried to build things. We try to build this operation. We try to get more kids from Frontier involved, really get in the schools. 
All that yeah. goes away in every community in this country if this thing passes through. It's terrible. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've lived down, I mean, when I lived in Georgia, it was the public access thing that did the high school football games. Sure. And Texas as well. And I mean, Texas, Alabama. Here too. I mean, right. But Texas, Alabama, and Georgia without Friday Night Football on their television, they would riot. Right. That's about the only thing they would riot over. Seriously. <laughs> and so I, I, when I read this, I'm like, well, how is Texas going to watch their high school football? Um, and that in itself, would you would think, would torpedo this. Well, uh, what's hard for me to imagine would be if we went to our towns and tried to raise $160,000 out of our tax money. And well, that's what they're trying to do, I think. That, that, that's the end game here, is to put more money back in the pockets of the cable company and force the towns to pick up. And I, look, I'm not going to go to the, the town meeting in Deerfield and say, give me $80,000, which is half our budget, by the way. Right. And they left me out of the room, and with, with right, rightfully so. I mean, just the, the way the thing was set up, it was set up as a trade-off. You get to have exclusive rights to this area in exchange for this service. And now they want to change, they really rewrite the rules. And the thing is, you talk about negotiating a 10-year cable contract. Whitley, Deerfield, and Soto would just negotiate a 10-year cable contract. Every contract that gets negotiated is is dependent on FCC rules at the time. If the FCC changes the rules, those contracts aren't what the paper they're written on. And that's where this gets really dangerous. Because we can't, we have no recourse. None. Do you think that Comcast is supporting this FCC change? Um, I haven't heard that they are, but I can't imagine they wouldn't because it means more money in their pocket. I mean, granted, it's pennies on the dollar compared to what they make, but I, look, I, I can tell you that my experience with Comcast has been, has not been great in terms of their willingness to just do, to just abide by the rules of their own contracts. We have a meeting coming up at Waitley that's a year later than it should have been regarding going live in their new town offices because Comcast didn't do the work they were supposed to do, which is part of their contract. I, if I were a betting man, I'd say, yeah, the cable companies are probably doing cartwheels over this because it means more coin for them and less of a, of a, a burden. You know, there's not, there's, and there's not just operate, there's capital money as well involved in this. You know, we, we got our capital money in the last contract for the last three towns I mentioned was front loaded, which means we get less on the back end. But, but, but the change doesn't affect capital money. Well, yeah, I, but, that's all, but that's all you're going to have. That's right. I mean, the the right. killer for us is an operating budget that pays yeah. my salary, that pays my stringers, that pays our production assistants, pays for equipment. Right. We just keep the lights on. It's the funding that produces the shows. Correct. It's the funding that gets somebody here to video the shows, that gets somebody to tape Conway Festival of the Hills or, right. or, and, or the and, Frontier and, football games. And I can tell you to keep all those balls in the air for four towns is not easy, but we do it. Yeah. yeah. And I think we do a pretty good job at Definitely. it. Definitely. And, and I, I just, I can't imagine. I mean, if you look right now, there's no reporter here from the local newspaper. I mean, the local newspapers have given up pretty much covering the small communities. We're it, man. We're the ball game. And we have to be here to be able to document this stuff. FCC doesn't care about that. They care about what they care about, which is deregulation. This is all part of a pattern of deregulation. Well, the problem is it's hitting us right between the eyes. And you wouldn't save any money by not having a, a broadcast channel and just putting the things on YouTube. You still have the same well, we have <coughs> production a, expenses to correct, go into that. Correct. We have a, a, a broadcast <coughs> server. I mean, could we move everything to YouTube? But that's capital, yeah. Well, it's, well, the, the server is already paid for. Yeah. But, I mean, if what you're asking me, I think is... <coughs> I'm saying that you wouldn't move, you wouldn't save any money. We wouldn't just be able to shift over to YouTube because the whole production, all of the production costs are still there. Right, and you still, but you wouldn't have any money coming in to be able to keep right. the operation together. Yeah. So it's a catch-22. Right. Uh, believe me... Uh, the, the reason I ask that question is that when I talk to people, there are a lot of people who may not think about public access television, but they love the polka, or right. they, or exactly. they, or they love some as they love the the football games, or you know they they love some piece of it 
that they don't really think of as those boring selectmen's meetings, although it's always amazing. Even if they recall the movie Wayne's World fondly. <laughs> right, exactly. Do, do people watch the selectmen's oh, meetings. Yeah. Well, the other part of this that's also, I mean, we're, we're already under fire in a certain sense because people are cutting the cable cord all over the place. And yeah. that will, it hasn't quite yet, but it will eventually impact our funding because every person that cuts the cord, that's one more franchise fee that goes out the window. Yeah. So it, at some point, the numbers are going to go be dwindling anyway. But this would you know, be a difference between a, you know, sort of a death of a thousand cuts and a hatchet across the leg. You're talking about chopping, chopping off appendages, and you're talking about taking 30, 40, 50%, 70% in some cases. Where'd you get that budget. number? I've actually been doing a little bit of my own research, and that's the number that keeps coming up is 30, but it, it all depends on what the cost, and, and as you said, it, they'll tell you what the cost of having a channel is. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bet you that it outstrips what we get from Conway, what we get from Waitley, maybe not Deerfield. But I would think it also would include the cost of maintaining those fiber optic lines that connect um, you, you know, the server room to right. the various towns. Yeah. And, and fiber optic is incredibly expensive. Correct. So you, you take all of that, and if, if you know, you're a bean counter at Comcast, you're going to tell it up every single expense right. and charge it off against. And I mean, I don't think we're going to owe them any money, but we could lose all of our funding. That's what I would expect. And that is that means FCAT would cease to exist. We could not do business. And all of this stops unless you know, individual towns want to pick it up on their own and I, I don't know how that would be. That, that might be another avenue to litigate, though. Those the co their cost estimates have to be fit. They can't just charge you the expenses. They have to charge. The, they have to credit you for things like the depreciation and all that other. They can't just be one side of the ledger that they're socking you with. They have to, and they're probably not inclined to do that. My my hope is that Ed Markey and the U.S. Senate, and I hate to put my hope in the U.S. Senate, but my hope is that the U.S. Senate, even though it's a Republican majority, will look at this and say this is pretty ridiculous and petty, but then again, you, Washington bureaucrats don't necessarily care that much about what a small town thinks in terms of keeping their public access station on the air. So. It was quite a battle over net neutrality. But net neutrality is more universal than public access television. I mean, <coughs> there are people that... I, there were but there actually, was still quite a battle over it. Well, there was so, a huge battle over it. So I, I share your, your concern. But I've actually that. seen quotes in the Worcester Telegram where a guy said, well, this is a, a hidden cost of, of cable. You're talking about 57, 58 cents, whatever the, the charge is per month. Yeah. I mean, we're not talking about a lot of money for, for a cable customer to absorb. I mean, take a look at some of the charge offs you have on some of your electric bills and other utilities. It's ridiculous. This is pennies on the dollar, and then they're going to squeeze us out of it using a federal regulation. It's very upsetting. Well, I, I think that Conway. Uh, Comcast gets a good deal, you know, that, that we run FCAT on a shoestring, produce fabulous shows. Um, it's why I, I, when I wrote the letter that we're going to send, I included a number of really excellent clips of, sh of shows that, that FCAT has produced. I would submit to you, and I, and I, I think that's great, and I appreciate the, the And that's why I hope they read them. I don't I think, think Comcast knows or cares what we put on those channels. What they know is what it costs to provide those channels, and if the FCC is going to provide them an out from having to provide that and eat that cost and pass it on to us in the form of reduced assessments, they're going to jump at that. Um, I, I could talk till I'm blue in the face to Comcast about how great our programming is and how hard we work at it. They're not going to care because the people that we're serving are the people in the communities, not the companies, not the federal government. We're here for you. We serve at your pleasure, the pleasure of the other boards, but we serve to, to, we work to serve the community as best we can. And this is a real kick in the teeth if it happens. And, and just if this, and I'm told that this, if this is approved, it could go in as early as December. So it would affect the first quarter's budget. So mm. I, I don't know what that looks like in terms of a real cut, but you know, I anybody who's watching this, you know, call your senator because the FCC deadline is this Wednesday. Tomorrow. 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 By the tomorrow. time we're airing this, it's going to be past the deadline. Yeah. So that's another thing that really kind of irked me was this really kind of got snuck in in the back door. They they announced it in September, and they voted initial approval in October. 
But when they, when they announced in September, they it, it put, started the clock on the 60-day comment period. So I just got wind of it. If, if Tom didn't ring the bell, I would have known about it. Yeah. And I've been screaming at bloody murder to anybody who will listen to NPR or whatever media outlets because nobody understands this, and they're not going to understand it until it, it hits. So I go out on a slight limb. I suspect Tom heard about it from the MMA. Yeah, oh, yeah. but he, but in MMA, but even even Mass Access, which is one of the groups associated, they're even behind the eight ball on this. I mean, they're just picking this up now, and these are the people that are supposed to be watching this stuff. I'm not criticizing Mass Access. Everybody missed this. Yeah, it's just one of those things, and we can only hope that the FCC doesn't approve it. But I don't think I think that they're going to do it, and maybe the Senate can stop them. I don't know. That's all I know. I appreciate though your willingness to sign that letter and. Uh, are the other towns going to send it, or will they have some board meetings I've noticed, time? I've we we were know, lucky to have this meeting tonight. The, the next select board meetings in those towns are ne they're next week or the following week. They're not going to make the deadline. I've notified all the town administrators in all the communities. I haven't heard back from, except for Tom, I haven't heard back from anybody else. Yeah. So. And it's not a criticism. It's just, the, 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 I thought we had till December, but apparently not. So. If there's anything else that I could do that we could do as a town, I would be all for it. I, I, I wish I could tell you what I make a suggestion. I would say call your senators or keep the heat on Markey. Markey seems to be the only senator that's really sort of pushing this. He's got five or six co-sponsors on a measure to block this, but you need 51, a majority plus one. And whether you get that, I don't know. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak, and yeah. I appreciate the support. We'll keep doing it as long as we can. So I'll move we, uh, approve, we the, approve the letter. I'll second it. Aye. Thank you. Sure. <coughs> it's a very good letter, Bob. Was it okay? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, no, that's great. Uh, it was hard to write because I was also believing they're not going to read it. So what What? What can I say? Well, they're not. Might catch their attention or yeah, something. Yeah, board know, of so. selectmen, they're just going to scratch their head and wonder what that is. Terrible. Yeah. And we have uh, uh, a date for the holiday party. So I got in touch with Barbara and um, looking at the week before Christmas, which is when we have the party in the last few years. Um, ran some dates that week by her, and she said the 20th would be a good day, which is a Thursday. So I told her I would bring it to you, and you could. Is that a planning board meeting night, do you know? Um, I don't think it is. I think there's, are they second and fourth Thursdays? So we do have an FCAT board meeting that night. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. But we can work around that. What time is the uh, FCAT? 5.30. Uh, On December or January? December. December. No, but our meeting is until January, Bob. <clears throat> yeah, it's 6 p.m. planning board. But we must have had one that I didn't cancel, so I... Yeah, we're, we're meeting, the next meeting is the, the annual meeting in January. Good, too. So that, no, we have no FCAT board meeting that night. No. Okay. So yes, Tom, it is a planning board meeting night. Uh oh. So they're first and third. <clears> that must be. But they'll be right downtown here then. Well, they will. That'll that'll provide reinforcements when they come in after the. Oh oh, and their meeting is at six. Maybe at we could six. have it. Maybe we could start at four. That would be good. Start. We usually start at 4.30. What time is their meeting? Six. Well, four, 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 four thirty, thirty should be, be good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'll get back in touch with Barbara and tell her Thursday the 20th at 4 30, from 4.30 to 6? Uh, let's say 6.30. Okay. So we can talk about the planning board after they've gone. Okay. <laughs> Good. Right. At the end, just at the to end. be clear. Yes, at the Conway Inn. Excellent. 
pizza. <laughs> Items not anticipated uh, 48 hours in advance. I have nothing. No, I don't. So, the update. I was afraid you'd say that. Uh-oh. <laughs> I didn't. You, you knew it's coming? Yes. I have them. I just didn't uh, print them out. So, it's, uh... Well, while you're printing that, why don't we... Uh... <laughs> so what's next on the agenda is the select board comments. Does anybody... Any comments, Phil? No. I don't either. I don't know. And if I want to talk about mail, I don't see a mail envelope. We didn't have any mail. So, no mail? No. Well, that's good. Here's your MMA newsletter within the select board mail box. As you mentioned, the Garage Facility Committee met for a site visit and regular meeting at which there was a great deal of public comment and also discussed developing a report regarding the need for a new facility as well as the process to move forward. Their next meeting will be Wednesday, December 5th at 6 p.m. in the Town Hall General Purpose Room. Uh, the Personnel Committee met and, subject to some editing, has recommended a revised version of the Employee Handbook for your approval. My assistant and I will be making those revisions and bringing it to you as soon as possible. After this, we expect to have minor changes on an annual basis. You want to talk about the school committee issue with that and how that, that was? We're, 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 we're going to, and we're, we're going to, we're going to communicate with you about that. Okay. Officially. Okay. Oh. Which is good. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, two planning board members and I interviewed two candidates for administrative assistant to boards and committees, and we'll have one to recommend at your next meeting. Great. Uh, Peter Zale has submitted his resignation from the Conservation Commission and from the Community Preservation Committee, Ooh. to which he was the Conservation Commission representative. Since he was also chair of the Community Preservation Committee, this leaves quite a hole to be filled. I will contact the CPC and offer to convene a meeting to elect a new chair and assess their membership status. That is how they're doing for members. So, so it's Peter's resignation from the Conservation Commission. Leaves that, them without a chair. That, but that really... As far as I know. Yeah. Um, that's what really prompted my having to sit on that committee now, that commission, the Conservation Commission. Yes. So. Yes. Uh, and, and, and the meeting I went to um, two weeks ago, uh, Peter was there, which was great. So that was good. his last meeting. It was a handoff. It was a handoff, yeah. Oh, good. Uh, in departmental news, there was good coverage in the recorder for uh, the Citizens Academy, I should say. Uh, though they did not pick up on the change to Town Academy as the name Conway will be using. Uh, I didn't mention that to him on the phone, just so you know. Um, I'll also note that Governor Baker signed the Civic Education Bill on Thursday, which mandates that each student do a project on civics. I had provided testimony in support of that bill on behalf of the Massachusetts Municipal Management Association Though I also noted that New Hampshire requires high school students to pass a competency assessment hmm. of the United States and New Hampshire government and civics, and found it unusual that Massachusetts would let it fall, let itself fall behind New Hampshire in <laughs> such education. We do. It is up to the individual schools. I know mm -hmm. Frontier um, has, as a requirement, has a civics component as a requirement of graduation that's not required by statute. And that um, uh -huh. one of the things that students can do to satisfy that is to attend the town meeting and have proof of it. Mm -hmm. 
And I was trying to make that attendance of town meeting mandatory. Um, and there was a legal problem w with why I couldn't do that. But um, we're watching you though, FCAT. There you go. <laughs> uh, the most recent Franklin Regional Planning Board meeting included information on, mira on marijuana operations, a report from the International City Managers Association. Uh, is called uh, Local Impacts of Commercial Cannabis. I have a copy of that. You're welcome to look at it. It's right on my desk. I, can... I, I think I read in the recorder that Amherst now has their first... Northampton. Was it Northampton Recreational Marijuana Facility? That was a live broadcast from MSNBC. Is that, that right? And it was just turning, turn and it was a reporter on the streets, and it's going to be the first... It's not open yet, but it's going to be the first retail shop um, east of the Mississippi River. Wow. Hmm. And they have, uh, tra they're anticipating huge traffic problems. <laughs> Seriously. They're, they're calling out, opening day. They're canceling leave for the whole police department <laughs> for that day. I'm serious. Mm. Uh, finally, I'm preparing a budget memo to go out soon. Uh, we need final figures for FY 2018 from the accountant plugged into the budget worksheets, and then they're good to go. Great. That's my news. Great. Uh, announcements. Any new announcements? No. I'm going to move to uh, adjourn. Well, our next meeting, which okay. we want to make sure everyone knows, is November 26th, two weeks from today. Except and it was two weeks from yesterday. Right, right, right. It's on a Monday. It's on a Monday again? Yes, yes. Because today's a oh, Tuesday. Okay, yes it is. But Oh, no, Monday. Back to so, Mondays. You're yeah. right. Back to Mondays. So, so 26th on a Monday at going back to our usual 6 p.m. Not at 5.30. So. so we all don't have meetings afterwards. Too many meetings tonight. Everyone's off to yeah. a thousand meetings tonight. The announcement that I, is that was very sad to see the church come tumbling down yesterday. That was... Uh, just the sound of it coming, coming, just the sound of it from my house was awful. Um, mm. So anyone who missed it, there is, uh, the recorder was there, and the recorder had an excellent article. Yeah. And if you look at the recorder article online at recorder.com, they have some great videos yeah. of the church coming down. Oh. So, you, you know, you can't see that in the newspaper, but if you look at it online... Uh, there are some wonderful videos of the church coming down. Yeah. Best of luck to all involved. Yeah. Okay. Move, okay. we adjourn. Second. Aye.